Greetings everyone! You're watching the channel Aviation Obsession. The Cold War era was one of the most intriguing times for military aircraft development. As tensions between the West and the Soviet Union grew, aircraft manufacturers kept pushing the envelope in an effort to stay competitive. The Vought F-8 Crusader feels like one of those wonderful aircraft, even though the push meant that there were a few failures along the way. It was among the finest fighter jets with a carry base ever produced in the U.S. It was the final American fighter developed with guns as its primary weapon, earning it the nickname The Last of the Gunfighters after its debut flight in March 1955. Therefore, in today's video, we will talk about the VOD F-8 Crusader's history and features. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for future uploads. Without further ado, let's get started. The Korean War had made Americans aware that the 50 caliber machine gun would no longer be sufficient, even if weapons would still be required as the primary armament. Therefore, the new aircraft's primary armament would be 20mm cannons. In September 1952, the Navy declared a need for an aircraft that could reach a top speed of 800 knots or 920 miles per hour at 30,000 feet, have a climb rate of 25,000 feet per minute, and land at 100 miles per hour or less. Vought presented the V-383, later known as the F-8 Crusader, under the leadership of John Russell Clark. The aircraft's Pratt and Whitney J-57 turbojet engine had a strong thrust of 18,000 pounds. The aircraft could fly through any type of weather and had a long range. The overall length of the aircraft was 55 feet, and it had a wingspan of 35 feet. The aircraft's variable incidence wing which rotated 7 degrees while landing and provided a greater angle of attack without affecting forward visibility, was perhaps its most notable feature. In a short time, the F-8 became famous. On August 21, 1956, Commander Robert W. Windsor broke the previous record by traveling 9 miles at 1,015 miles per hour, or 882 knots. As a result, the F-8 became the first operational jet aircraft capable of flying at a speed of more than 1,000 miles per hour. The range of the aircraft was 1,500 nautical miles. It had a maximum takeoff weight of 34,000 pounds. A photo reconnaissance variant of the aircraft was also flown by future astronaut Major John H. Glenn Jr. on a record-breaking transcontinental mission on July 16, 1957. He took off from Los Olmitos, California, and traveled for 3 hours 22 minutes and 50 seconds before landing at Floyd Bennett Field in New York. Its main weapons were four 20mm Colt Mark 12 cannons, which were capable of reaching a remarkable top speed of 1,227 miles per hour. The single-seat Crusader also had a large fuselage, swept back high wings, and a single-engine configuration. The fuselage back was covered by a single vertical tail fin. Due to its supersonic speed and ability to take off even with its wings folded, the Vought F-8 Crusader is perhaps best known for its many nicknames. Because the engine's air intakes were not very high above the ground and the aircraft had the ability to suck a man in, pilots preferred to call it the sports car, while Navy deck crew members discovered they called the aircraft the Gator. The Crusader design team was also developing a larger, more powerful aircraft, known at chance Vought as the V-401. About the same time as the F-8U variants, it was being developed as the Vought F-8 Crusader program successor and as a rival to the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. The Crusader III was a larger aircraft that was powered by a Pratt and Whitney J-75 P-5A, engine that produced 29,500 pounds of afterburning thrust. It shared a variable incidence wing with the F-8 Crusader and was externally similar to it. The Crusader was fast, agile, and quite versatile. Due to its combat effectiveness against North Vietnamese pilots flying their MiG-17 aircraft, the F-8 was also known as the MiG Killers. In the fight over Vietnam, the Crusader had the highest kill ratio of any aircraft. Additionally, the pilots and their aircraft were so obviously superior to the MiGs and their North Vietnamese pilots, enabling a U.S. Navy victory without firing a shot. In terms of its operational history, American Navy carriers employed the Crusader as a day fighter. Interestingly, it was the first aircraft used by the Navy after the Korean War to fly for an extended period of time. Many post-Korean aircraft were only used by the various naval squadrons for a short time before being replaced. The Crusaders fired cameras during their first combat missions, 
which were part of photo reconnaissance flights during the Cuban Missile Crisis in October 1962. These missions were flown by F-8s throughout the Vietnam War, in addition to strike and combat air patrol flights. In aerial battle, the Crusader pilots are also credited with downing 18 hostile mix. After nearly 20 years of service, the F-8 was ultimately decommissioned by the U.S. Navy in 1976. Before it was retired in 1987, the Navy continued to operate the RF-8, the F-8's photo reconnaissance variant. Additionally, several air forces would use the F-8 to enable the aircraft to land and take off from the shorter and smaller French-made carriers. These aircraft were equipped with blown flaps. The French bought about 42 of these Crusaders, and they used them up until the start of 2000, when the new Dassault Rafale 4th generation fighter started to replace them. This retirement marked the last official operational F-8 in service anywhere. The third and final user of the F-8 was the Philippine Air Force, which employed them up until 1991, when more modern aircraft proved to be financially out of reach. The Philippine government bought these used U.S. Navy planes. There were 35 F-8H models delivered in total, and each one was scrapped. Moreover, NASA would use some modified F-8s for a variety of scientific purposes. In the opinion of many senior U.S. officials, the introduction of air-to-air -air missiles marked the end of the age of dogfights. However, the agility of its weaponry, as well as the fact that its cannons were suited for close-quarters combat, meant that the dogfighters' era was far from done. It was at this point that it got the nickname The Last Gunfighter. Amazingly, the F-8 Crusader was the last fighter to be built with a cannon as its primary armament, but it also shows just how much armaments have changed since the Second World War. The F-8, on the other hand, was one of the most well-known aircraft of its era and has been the face of the United States Navy's aviation fleet for more than 20 years. It would go down in history as one of the most successful fighters ever built in America, proving its efficiency on numerous occasions. That's all for today. What do you think about this aircraft? Let us know in the comments section below. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to like and share it. Anyway, the most important thing is to remember to hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified of more updated videos. Thank you so much guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.